Welcome to Voices of the Community, which explores critical issues facing Northern California communities. We introduce you to the voices of community thought leaders and change makers who are working on solutions that face our fellow individual community members, neighborhoods, cities, and our region. This is George Coster, your host. This episode is part of a series of interviews we conducted through our participation in the Bay Area Video Coalition's TV show titled San Francisco Nonprofits Spotlight. The interviews were conducted via Zoom from April to June 2020 during the height of the first phase of the COVID-19 pandemic and the shelter-in-place requirements. The goal of the series is to shine a spotlight on the nonprofits and their staff who are struggling to deal with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on their operations, services, and sustainability. The series of interviews we conducted feature voices from a cross-section of organizations that make up the fabric of our community. Each of them brings a unique perspective on how they and we are dealing with the issues facing our community during the pandemic. I don't think every venue is going to survive this. I don't think our staffs will necessarily be the same size. So I think this is a moment or an opportunity to really think about how we can collaborate in a, in a much broader sense and how the arts community can come together. I think a lot of theaters are branded based on um, one vision or one aesthetic. And I think we need to let go of that to some extent so that we can really survive as an artistic community and uplift each other during this time. In this episode, we feature the voices of Rose Ozer, Associate Artistic Director, and Schaefer Mazzo, the Managing Director of ZSpace. ZSpace has become one of the nation's leading laboratories for developing new voices, new works, and new opportunities in American theater. ZSpace's performances span a variety of disciplines, including theater, dance, visual art, music, and performance art. Through its ZSpace New Works program, the organization develops unique works from initial concept to onstage production. ZSpace also provides technical residencies in which artists can make use of the entire facility, including the stage, lights, and sound system to test and develop their concepts. I'm joined remotely via Zoom by Rose Ozer, Associate Director, and Schaefer Mazzo, the Managing Director of ZSpace. Thanks for being here, Rose and Schaefer. And so, Rose, I want to turn to you first and just have you provide an overview of what is ZSpace and how does ZSpace work with artists and art organizations here in San Francisco? Great. ZSpace is a nonprofit organization based in the Mission District of San Francisco. Our mission is to empower artistic risk in the service of creating new work. And by new work, we mean theater, we mean dance, we mean opera, music, multidisciplinary work, everything. And we have an interesting model that's a hybrid of self-produced work and also presenting other work from other organizations. So over the course of a year, we generally see 50 arts organizations or independent producers produce work in our space. And we have work year round in Z space, which is our 244 seat theater and Z below, which seats 80. And we operate out of the former can factory. So it's a big warehouse space with very unique architecture, which allows artists to explore new work in other creative ways as well. We have a technical residency program where artists get professional resources and technical equipment to really focus on their artistic process. So we are process oriented rather than product oriented. We're all about what the artist needs and where they are in their development process to create exciting new work. Thank you. That was great, Rose. So Schaefer, I'm going to turn to you and ask if you could please share with the audience how the COVID-19 epidemic has really impacted the production and work of ZSpace and how it operates. And clearly, we're still not to a place where we're going to allow people to come back into theater. So how's it impacted you guys and what are you doing to address it? So our business is bringing large groups of people together in a space to share live work. So the current mandates and risks of the pandemic have shut down all of our business. So our venues are closed at the moment and have been closed since March 12th, when I think the official shelter in place was announced. So we are unable to conduct our normal business. We're unable to bring in artists to develop work in our space. We're essentially waiting for guidance of what sort of gatherings will be allowed and how, uh, how and when we can safely open our space again. Early in the pandemic, 
prior to the shelter in place, we were very conscious of the coming crisis and people's comfort levels and health risks and needs. So we did, even before the shelter in place, end up canceling performances of shows and having to close the venue to some of our rental clients early on. You know, as Rose said, we produce our own work, but a great deal of what our business is is presenting the work of others. So we have uh, a curated rental program. So all of the shows and slots we had booked between March and well, now we're imagining through the end of the summer that people had rented our space for their own productions. Those productions have had to be canceled or postponed. We are holding spots in future dates for those rental clients and producers, but with the uncertainty, nobody knows when we'll be able to resume our core business again. Rose, you guys have been around for several decades. What's been the largest impact of ZSpace on our community, both I think in a theatrical, cultural arts, but as well as in economic and psychological? I think ZSpace is known really for having a, a focus on the artist and the development process. And because of that, we're able to experiment with work that's at various stages of development. So artists, can come into our space and choose what they need to explore. And that also means audiences have an opportunity to better understand the life cycle of a new work and what it takes to polish a show, so to speak. I think we also, you know, our model of curating new work also means that we're different from other theater companies because we're not just operating under one artistic vision. And I think that's actually really important in a broader sense of what it means to distribute power and who gets to make art. Um, that a lot of theaters have one artistic director that's deciding the seven shows that happen that year. But we're really collaborating with a lot of other artistic directors, um, artistic directors of other dance companies and opera companies, and figuring out what they're working on and making a, uh, we don't call it a season, but making a, <laughs> a, a list of shows, a curated uh, year of shows that includes many artistic visions and voices. So I think that's really essential. And Schaefer, what are some of the needs that the C-Space team is seeing out there with regards to artists and organizations? And then more importantly, how can people in our community get involved in supporting your efforts? Well, I think as every organization that is shuttered at the moment, we're, you know, our financial situation is precarious. So we are grateful to have received one of the Paycheck Protection Program loans that is keeping us able to employ our staff and provide some funding for like our on-call staff. So that's front of house and house techs and teaching artists. But after the end of the Paycheck Protection Program period, we'll have some real financial decisions to make. I think the one thing we are all focused on is the broader artistic community that ZSpace supports and that calls ZSpace home. So we have a full-time staff and we have some on-call staff, but the artists that perform work, present work, produce work, they don't have secure funding. So we've been trying to promote the Performing Artist Workers Fund, which is a, a program of Theater Bay Area, of which I'm a board member who's giving direct grants to performing arts workers right now who, you know, they rely on part-time on-call work. And in this moment in time where there's just no work to be had, we are really thinking about those artists who don't have the support structure that we can as full-time staff and remaining connected with our community and that artists are feeling supported both in terms financially, but in terms of being, you know, collectively thought of and considered part of the family and how to be taken care of. So I would say as much as we need support for Z space financially, we need support for independent artists and arts workers as well in this time of crisis. And so where would an audience member go? Would they go to your website? Is there a special campaign you have going for the COVID-19? How would they support an artist and also Z space? So you can support ZSpace by going to www.zspace.org and hit the donate button. We do not have a specific COVID-19 campaign at the moment. We're really trying to look holistically about what ZSpace needs, what resources we have, and where we can share with that community. Now, the Performing Artist Workers Fund is run 
through Theater Bay Area. So you can go to their website, which is www.tba.org and directly donate to support an artist in need right now. And I think also, while we don't have a specific campaign going, we are regularly communicating with our audiences just to stay in touch, to keep our artistic lives and communities going. So you can sign up for our mailing list also at www.zspace.org and stay in touch with us as we try to keep the artistic community of Z-Space going and the broader community of the Bay Area's artistic ecology going as well. Thank you. And then, you know, we're going to make sure that the audience has all your contact information as well. I think the final question would be, I'm going to direct this to you, Rose. What would you hope to see as positive things coming out of the pandemic? Yeah, really since Z-Space's inception in 1993. Z-Space has been all about sharing resources. I think Word for Word is a great example of that, the way we have a resident company with its own artistic directors, but under our roof. And over the course of Z-Space history, we've experimented with other models of sharing space with other companies, uh, not just on the stage, but also our office desk. And I think for, for any arts organization to survive this pandemic, we're going to need to get rid of our egos and and think more and more about how to share space and share resources. I don't think every venue is going to survive this. I don't think our staffs will necessarily be the same size. So I think this is a moment or an opportunity to really think about how we can collaborate in in a much broader sense and how the arts community can come together. I think a lot of theaters are branded based on Um, one vision or one aesthetic. And I think we need to let go of that to some extent so that we can really survive as an artistic community and uplift each other during this time. Thank you, Rose and Schaefer, for sharing all of your wonderful work at Z-Space. And please stay safe and healthy out there as we work our way through some crazy times. And I look forward to seeing live theater at Z-Space and love uh, what you guys do. So thank you so much. Thanks, George. Thank you, George. That's it for this episode of Voices of the Community. You've been listening to the voices of Rose Ozer, Associate Artistic Director, and Schaefer Mazzo, the Managing Director of ZSpace. As the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic continues to take lives and wreak havoc on our communities, there are ongoing conversations within arts and cultural organizations about how to survive. Based on the state of California's phased-in approach to reopening the economy, The performing arts sector is the last phase of the reopening, which will probably be in the fall or winter of 2020. Z-Space and their collective arts organizations are working together to both find a way through this historical moment and to help the artistic community at large to get through this. The Z-Space community is committed to the art of live performance, to hosting artists and audiences from a multitude of communities, and to creating work that speaks to the moment, whatever that moment may be. We hope that you enjoyed the insights, points of view, and personal stories from the voices of changemakers and their nonprofits featured in the series. To find out more and get engaged with the nonprofit and staff members featured in this episode, please go to my website, georgecoster.com, and click on Voices of the Community to find links to this episode. Please consider a donation and volunteering to provide a hand up to your fellow community members. I want to thank my associate producer, Eric Estrada, as well as the wonderful team at Bay Area Video Coalition. Go to www.bavc.org to find out more about Bay Area Video Coalition services. To listen to our next episode in this series and to our archived past shows, which feature community voices working on solutions to critical issues facing Northern California communities, please go to georgecoster.com. While you're on our website, please consider making a donation to help us provide future shows just like this. Please rate us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and share the story with your friends. Follow us on Twitter at George Coster and please email us at george at georgecoster.com. I'm George Coster in San Francisco and thank you for listening. <laughs>